Hey everybody, I hope you guys are doing well. Today we are going to start on a new chapter and that chapter is known as the electric circuits. How did we get here? Let me just take you through a quick survey of what we learned so far. We learned that if there is two charges, we have a Q1 and Q2 with a distance between them R. We know that the force is equal to K Q1 times Q2 divided by R squared. Okay? From there, we learned about the electric field. And the electric field is equal to F over Q. Okay? And then <clears throat> we learned something known as the potential. And the potential, we called it V, is equal to KQ over R. We got to the potential by knowing that the electric potential energy is basically equal to um, KQ1, Q2 over R. Okay? Notice this, every equation is different from the other. This is the electric potential energy is K Q1 Q2 over R. The force is K Q1 Q2 over R squared. The electric field is K Q1 Q2, K Q1 over R squared, which is F over Q. And the voltage is for a point charge is K Q over R. So every equation is different and represents something different. Now, why did we all learn about this? It started with charges and forces between charges and electric fields. But why we are learning about this? We are learning about this for this little thing here, okay? This known this is known as the potential. And potential is basically what we know is the battery. It is the battery. How does the battery work is known, you know, there's many many names for it. You can call it the potential difference. Uh, you can call it the uh, battery, and now we are going to learn it as a new thing here is known as the electromotive force. This is name that is widely used, and the electromotive force is basically, you can think about it as a source or a potential difference provided by some type of a source that is the battery. So the battery looks like something like this. Uh, you've seen a battery many times before. It has a positive side and a negative side. And in the circuit, we, we think of it as this way. So that's a negative side, and that's a positive side. So the negative side is the small kind of like uh, line, and the positive side is the, is the big line. Notice that the battery is polar, which means that it has a positive and negative side. Many electric instruments do not have polars. They do not care if they are connecting them to the circuit in a positive direction or a negative direction of the current. That doesn't matter. But some care about that. Some instruments care about that. And if you connect them wrong, you may actually damage the instrument or the circuit. Okay? Um, so, so, you should know that the potential difference provided by the battery pushes the charges to, to move in a certain direction in a conductor. Okay? This movement of both charges are known as the current. And the current always goes from the higher potential to the lower potential. Hmm. Okay, so how is that possible? We know in the past we learned about something we called it the test charge, Q0, and Q0 is positive. But the only charges that are moving are what? The electrons. So the positive charges actually do not move as we learn. Okay? So if we look at a conductor like that. So this is a conductor, like a wire, and we can think of this as cross-section area. And we have charges that are free to move, and the battery is, mo is pushing them this way, and these charges that are moving are only the negative charges. So the negative charges are going this way, okay? But <coughs> by convention, they said Let's think about it this way. If there is an electron here, and the electron is moving this way, it is as there is a positive charge left behind. If a positive charge left behind, this means that the positive charge is going this way. Okay. So basically, if the electron leaves its spot, leaves behind what? A positive charge. So the electron is going this way, but you can think of the electron stationary and the positive charge is going the other direction. So by convention, by convention, they thought of something. And by convention, they said, OK, the electric current goes from the positive side and goes back to the negative side. Okay? 
So that's what they said about the electric current. Although the negative charges are the ones that are moving, it doesn't matter. By convention, they thought of, okay, let's think about it as the positive charge that is moving, not the negative charge. And that's just by convention, okay? All right, so the current I, the current here in a circuit, we're gonna call it I, all right? Now let's define the current in a circuit. As you can see, there's amount of charges that cross a certain section of area in a certain time. <clears throat> so they said the current is equal to number of charges that cross a certain section area of the wire in a certain time. All right? So number of charges or the amount of charges, let's say that's the amount of charges, and this is measured in what? In Coulomb. So they said Coulomb over, over seconds. And they called that actually Coulomb over seconds. They call it Ampere. Right? So, and for short, they call it A, A or some people call it Amp. Right? So this is just a quick uh, kind of like thought process of how we got the current. So the current I is equal to charge over time. You can think about it this way. And this is the definition of the current. Okay, as an example, let's look at this one. Find the amount of charges that pass through a certain cross-section area of a wire if the current of 0 0.03 amps, I should say here, passes by after 12 seconds. So basically, you have a current I is equal 0 0.03 amps, and the time it passes in a cross-sectional area is 12 seconds. We need to find what? The charge, the unknown charge, okay? The time difference that we need to focus on is delta T. You know, it could be a better or more precise to define this as delta Q over delta T because we are concerned with certain amount of charges in a certain amount of time, okay? So, hmm, how do we solve this one? We can use this equation, I is equal to delta Q over delta T and we need to find what? The amount of charges, so delta Q, so cross multiplication, you get I times delta T. The current is 0 0.03 amps, and um, the time is equal to 12 seconds, okay? And if you multiply this, you will get 0.36 coulomb, and that's a lot of charge, as we know. But look, the current is small, so let's get a feeling of the number. This current could be, you know, uh, 0 0.03 could be in your house okay or in your computer and goes through a wire in 12 seconds so the amount of charge that goes by is 0.36 coulomb now how many electrons is that how many electrons is that all right you know that one electron as a charge is equal 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 coulomb so that's one electron so how many electrons is 0.36 Coulomb. So you basically, you divide the 0.36 Coulomb over the 1.6 times 10 to minus 19. That's Coulomb per electron, right? That's what this unit is. This is the charge of electrons. So that's 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 Coulomb per electron. Coulomb with Coulomb cancels out, the electron comes out, so you are left off with the number of electrons. And if you do this calculation, you get that the number of electrons here is equal to 2.25 times 10 to the power 18 electrons. And this is a huge number of electrons, 10 to the power 18. Can you imagine that? That's just in 12 seconds for a small current. That's it. Thank you.